Hi, my name is Danielle Hauseman. I'm an occupational therapist and rehab educator here at the Craig H. Nielsen Rehab Hospital. Thank you for watching this video about accessible minivans. Please take a moment to pause your video so you can read this important disclaimer. Thank you. Here are the objectives that we'll talk about in this video. We want to help you know what to look for in an accessible van that's going to meet your needs, understand the pros and cons to both rear and side entry vehicles, and be familiar with local resources here in Utah to rent or buy an accessible vehicle from. So here are some important questions to consider for both now and in the future. So one, will my wheelchair fit in the vehicle? And it's important to have the opportunity to actually put your wheelchair in the vehicle before you purchase it. Don't just rely on measurements alone, but actually trying it whenever possible. What position do I want to ride in and will my wheelchair fit in the vehicle in that position? And will I be a passenger, driver, or both for now and in the future? And we can't emphasize enough how important it is to work with certified professionals to find and create custom solutions with an emphasis on certified professionals. So let's talk about rear entry vehicles. So with a rear entry vehicle, the wheelchair can't get into a front seat position. So the wheelchair user will be a passenger in the area where the back seats would be. Rear entry vans are usually less expensive than side entry. And when you're parking the vehicle, you don't need the stripe section of an accessible parking spot because you'll be entering and exiting through the rear of the vehicle. So that being said, please be so very careful, especially in busy parking lots when people often aren't paying as much attention as they should be. Beware of traffic. So a downside to rear entry is that there isn't any trunk space because that is removed to allow for the wheelchair to be able to exit and enter. There's limited seating for other passengers and with both rear and side entry vehicles, these vans have very low clearance and can be highly sensitive to speed bumps. So side entry vehicles are definitely a more common option and the floor conversion is lower, so you have about an extra 10 inches of head space. And then the downside of that is that there's even less ground clearance compared to rear entry. With a side entry vehicle, the front seats are removable, so the wheelchair user has the option of riding as the driver or in the front passenger seat. And the side entry vehicles are usually more expensive than rear entry. And here we do need the stripe section of an accessible parking spot, but this is much safer in most situations. And as with rear entry vehicles, be mindful of the sensitivity to speed bumps because of that low ground clearance. So to convert a vehicle, if you were to purchase a van and or if you already own a van and have it converted, this is very expensive. So this will range anywhere from $30,000 to $50,000 just for the conversion alone, plus the cost of the, the vehicle itself. So you can save money on taxes when you have a doctor's note and it would be preferable to purchase a vehicle that is already converted from the factory as opposed to buying a vehicle and then paying for that conversion fee. And here are some examples of accessible vehicle companies. So Braun Ability, Auto Ability, Vantage Mobility International, Freedom Motors USA, and there may be others to choose from as well. So it can be helpful to rent a vehicle before you purchase it. In other words, try it before you buy it. So in some instances, some companies may apply a portion of the rental fee to purchasing the vehicle. And the cost to rent a vehicle per day is approximately $150, but there may be discounts for longer term rentals. And the Craig H. Nielsen Rehab Hospital and the University of Utah does not endorse or recommend any specific companies, but here are examples of local resources here in Utah of where you can purchase a vehicle and you can find their websites by following the QR code on the top right hand corner of this screen. But we highly encourage you to do your own research to find a vehicle that will meet your needs. 
And here are some other financial tips. Um, so we had mentioned earlier having a doctor's letter to avoid paying sales tax and the doctor's letter just needs to include your diagnosis and the formal recommendation from the doctor that you need an accessible van. And if vocational rehabilitation is involved in your plan for returning to work and returning to school, it's possible that in some instances they may be able to help pay for a vehicle or vehicle conversion if transportation is a barrier to you returning to work or school. Um, you can use fundraising efforts such as from Help Hope, Help Hope Live to help pay for a vehicle. The Veterans Association may help to pay for a vehicle and using things such as manufacturer rebate programs and grants. And so here on this references page, you can see links to different grants that may be able to provide financial assistance. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please contact your primary care team with any questions and before you make any major purchases. Thank you.